And praise the Lord, everybody. So glad to be back with you in the house of the Lord. It's been a little bit exciting to be here with you. Expecting God to do great things tonight. Give honor to Pastor Johnson and uh, make sure you keep him in your prayers while he is away. And I love him very dearly and I love Brother Quinones as well. One of my very dear friends and so honored to be with him tonight. Glad to have my sweetheart with me and our boys and baby girl that's on the way. And we are excited to be with you in the house of the Lord. Amen. If I can, if I can get some more monitor, I don't know who does that, but that'd be awesome. Thank you. I think I had seven or eight services last week and that many this week. God is doing wonderful things. We were with a dross last week in a rally, and 54 people received the Holy Ghost on Friday night. It was a great meeting. And tonight, before service, the Lord spoke to me. I've never preached this. I've, I've preached one little part of it, but never this message because the Lord spoke something to me uh, in prayer. When you are staying in hotels on a nightly basis and you have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, your altar is usually the bathroom. So your, you know, your desk is the toilet. You put the Bible and the notes and stuff on there, and then you sit on the edge of the tub or you lay on the floor it's, if it's clean. And um, that's your, that's your little sanctuary. And so it was in there tonight in Merced where we're staying that the Lord spoke something to me, and. I feel like I have a word from the Lord. Amen. Exodus chapter 17, Judges chapter 6, Exodus 17, verses 8 through 16, and Judges 6, 22 through 24. Boy, it's good to be back at the Revival Center, man. Either Holy Ghost breakouts or fights break out, but something's going to happen. You know that every time. Do your best not to punch your neighbor in the face tonight, please. I know it's difficult for some of you. I've been here four times and there was brawls that broke out, so I know there could be a spirit of anger. <laughs> that was funny. You're allowed to laugh. Exodus 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. They took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. Rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. The Bible said that in Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Judges chapter 6, verse 22 through 24. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day is it yet in Ophrah of the Bezrites. I want to release something in here. And that is the revelation of naming your altars. The revelation of naming your altars. Lord Jesus, I take authority 
over the entire spirit world in Modesto right now. Every demonic spirit is subject to the word of God and the name of Jesus. Every human spirit to the word of God and the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you. And angels are in this city right now. I worship you and praise you. I feel an oncoming revival in this building. I worship you for souls getting the Holy Ghost and baptized in your name. And another level that this church is about to step into. I thank you for what you're going to do tonight. I give you honor. Bless this church. Bless their pastor. Bless the people, God. Let there be favor like they've never seen before. In Jesus' name, would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? You may be seated. Apologize for having you stand so long. I meant the only part that I've preached before is this first part right now that I'm going to talk to you about. Abraham, Abraham had five altars. The first time he built an altar, he had heard the voice of God call him out of the land that he was in. He was just following this voice. And so he built an altar in Genesis 12 under the Lord. And then in Genesis 13, he went back to that same altar. And then in Genesis 15, he built a new altar. This message all started tonight as I was praying on the floor, and the Lord said, tell the people it's time to build new altars because new things are about to take place that require new altars in their homes. <laughs> and Abraham in Genesis 15 is getting closer to God, and so he builds a new altar, and this time he puts all kind of stuff on it. He puts a, a heifer, and he puts a, a she-goat, a ram, a turtle dove, pigeon, puts all these animals on it, stuff that he owned, and he, and he laid it out as a sacrifice before God, and he gets closer to God. Then, he, then in, uh, I believe it's Genesis 18 or so, another time, another encounter with God shows up, and he, he builds another altar because the Bible said, well, he, the, 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 that the Lord came to his house, and, and so he opens up the tent door, and the Lord is there with two angels, and so he said, what I gave God before wasn't enough. I've got to do something beyond what I did before. So he, he said, I gave God stuff that I owned before. So this time I've got to, he's getting closer to home. So he, he tells Sarah, get some water and, and get some meal, make some cakes for them and go out and get the good calf and kill the calf and, and get some milk and some, some butter. And we're going to give the Lord steak and cake and butter and milk. And it's, he's given the best he can possibly give him. And he's offering this to God. And, and then in Genesis 22, he builds an altar big enough for his family. And God says, I want you to take your son and take him up to the mountain, which I will tell thee of, and sacrifice him there. And so Abraham's, I want you to see Abraham when it's, he, it's amazing how he started off by giving God just rocks and altar, then giving God stuff he owned, then giving God stuff from the house and stuff that he loved, and now he's giving God something from within his loins, his son. That's because the closer you get to God, the more God will require of you. If, well, I'm just comfortable with my walk with God. I don't feel like sacrificing. That tells me there's quite a distance between you and God. Because the closer you are, the more likely you'll have to consecrate something and sacrifice something. If God is calling you to consecration, you're closer to him than you think you are. He's telling you there's somewhere to go with me. And so he said, I want you to give me your son. It was the only time God ever asked him anything. God never asked for the other altars. God never asked for the cake or the steak. God never asked for the heifer. God never asked for the altar before. But this time God said, I want you to build an altar big enough for your family member to, to fit on. Is, is your altar big enough for your family to fit on and so he builds an altar and, and he puts his boy on the altar some people say he was 20 some people say he was old as 37 although one thing we do know for a fact is when this thing ended and 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 we all love the story but Isaac and Abraham are never recorded to, to be with each other ever again Isaac didn't come off that mountain with Abraham Abraham it was something that separated those two right there there was never a conversation after this moment but Abraham raises the knife and God says stop here's a ram in the thicket as a substitute and you know the story. But Abraham, right here, steps into our life as the first person to name an altar. And says, I will call this place Jehovah Jireh. 
God is my provider. He says that, and God releases the promise to him that everything in the future is taken care of. The revelation that God gave me tonight was this. When you build an altar unto God, when you sacrifice, when you build a landmark and you begin to name this moment, you release God. I want you to get this in your notes. You release God to permanently be what he's temporarily doing for you. In other words, when God said, I've got something for you, Abraham, and everything's taken care of, Abraham could have had a moment with God where he said, thank you, Lord, I appreciate it. But rather, he built an altar and named it and said, this place, from this point forward, God is now Jehovah Jireh, my provider. What does that mean? That God gave him a promise because Abraham named an altar and Abraham said, from this point forward, I will never have to worry about God not providing ever again. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Most people just give God a moment of thanksgiving when he comes through for them, and that's why they're murmuring and complaining and begging the next time they need a miracle. But if you'd build an altar where God came through and say he is from this point forward, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, I've got news for you. You'll never be in want again. Some of you aren't getting it yet. You'll never be in need again because you can step back and speak what you've built an altar on. Here's the problem. Too many of us, all right, let's just do this. Who has a promise from God in their life right now? You've got a promise from God. Three people. Wow, I'm hitting the wrong message then. Who's got a loved one that God said, I'm going to save them? Well, there's a lot more people, so you've got a promise from God. We are masters at getting promises and not building altars on them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach this for a moment. We are masters at God speaking what he's going to do for us, us doing a patty cake, thank you, Jesus, and getting it over it five minutes later and wondering why in five years, how come that promise has not come to pass yet? But the reason why promises, I want you to get this, remain unfulfilled is because there are no altars built on that promise. There are no landmarks where that happened. And from that day forward, I started calling him Jehovah Jireh. Every day, you're Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. You supply all my need. You don't testify about that if there's no altar. But if you've got an altar somewhere in your past where God came through for you, you should testify thankfully and you can walk in what happened. The Lord said, I desire, when I do a miracle for you, I desire for the miracle to go forward with you. But like an Israelite, when you could have crossed the Red Sea, you should be building altars out through the camp. But you know what they did? They just sang. Get the tambourines out. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. The horse and the riding thrown in the sea. Let's have a good shouting service Sunday night. And three days later, we need water, God. Where are you? Had they been building altars everywhere when they crossed the Red Sea, they would have known, whoa, all we have to do to know God's going to come through now is look back at what he did then and thank him like we did then, and we can expect him to come through now. <laughs> If God gives you a promise, your obligation is to start building an altar. 
What do I do? How do I build an altar? You've got to start thanking him every day for it. You've got to start sacrificing for it. You've got to start talking about it. The Lord told me it's time to have some conversations daily, not monthly, not yearly, not biannually, but daily. You need to start talking about what God's going to do. God told me this, so that's going to happen. I put, a, I put an altar on it. He gave me a promise on a Tuesday night. I could have patty caked and walked out, but instead I built an altar on it. I started thanking God for that moment. I started are sacrificing from that point forward and that moment right there has connected me to what God's doing now Jehovah Jireh my provider and the Bible said when Abraham named it that that it is still that to this day because you release God to do permanently what he's doing temporarily when you put an altar on a promise. Oh, I'm going to say it right in the devil's face. He gets a lot of people discouraged, mad at preachers, calling them false prophets. When they get a promise from God, then they sit there on their thumbs and wait, wait, wait. I'm just waiting on the Lord. You can wait, but you should build some altars while you're waiting. Anybody can sit there on the pew and be a statue on a Tuesday night and say, well, let's just see if it's tonight. Anybody can do that. But if you take somebody in tune with God to say, I'm going to thank him. It may not happen tonight. I'm going to go back to when he promised it to me. I'm going to build altars in my life. Moses is up, and this enemy shows up, Amalek. And Amalek wants to destroy Israel. Moses, the preacher, the pastor, goes to the mountain. You know the story. And every time his hands were raised, Joshua was fighting down the valley for Israel. Israel would win. Every time Moses' hands got tired, Amalek would gain the strength and start winning. Moses keeps his hands up. They finally have to hold his hands up in the end. And Israel defeats Amalek. Watch. And God starts talking. And says, write what just happened down in a book. Don't get over this. Don't let this be a silent victory that no one ever knows about. We've got too many people with silent victories that other people coming up need to hear about. We've got, oh, I'm going to say it. We've got too many elders that have seen stuff happen but aren't telling the next generation about it. You can pat it. We've got too many moms and dads that have been in the fire of God that their teenager has no clue about it because you've never told them. He said, write it down and you make sure you tell Joshua. In other words, you get the next generation connected to what just happened here. I feel revelation on me right now. He said, don't get a victory and not tell the kids about it. Don't get a breakthrough and let it not get to your kids. We've got too many moms and dads leaving Egypt and leaving their kids there. We need some people to say, what worked for me is going to work for you. You might be five years old, but let me tell you what the Lord did for me. Because I wanted to trans into your spirit and into your future somebody tell the next generation look what the Lord has done he healed my body he touched my mind he did save me just in time he said I want you to Tell everybody about this. And the Bible said, Moses said, really? I'm going to build an altar. And God said, I swear to you. I want you to get this. I swear to you that as long as there's an Amalek, there's a war coming from heaven. I'll always fight them for you. I want you to get this. Moses builds an altar, and God said, from this point forward, the victory you just received, you can walk in permanently. Because of your altar, I promise to fight these things every time you face these things. (laughs) 
Moses said, I'm going to name my altar Jehovah Nisi. God is my banner or God has given me victory. The reason why a lot of people don't think God will come through tomorrow is because you didn't build an altar when he came through yesterday. But if you start building altars every time he comes through, he'll let you know I'll fight this every time you face this. <laughs> he said, you need to make the last week's breakthrough become permanent. When God gives you a victory, you can make an altar and walk in victory. He said, Moses, every time this nation tries to fight you, this is why you got to tell the kids. This is why you got to tell everybody. Because if you tell everybody and you build that altar, every time in the future, this situation shows up in your house. Anytime this devil comes to take you out, the thing that you know has been fighting you, that you just got to, oh, it's just a good, you can say, well, it was a good day today. Or you can say, that was a victory. Normally, we don't have days like that. That was a victory. And you can say, well, thank you, Jesus, and move on. Or you can say, you know what? I'm not going to let tomorrow just come. I'm going to build an altar tonight of what God did today. Thank you for what you did today. Why? Because that's how you learn to walk in the victory that was just released in your house. <laughs> well, we had a good day and then we had a bad day. Then we had a good day. Then we had a bad day. Where were the altars? Because at the end of a good day, build an altar. Name that thing. What just happens about to continue. Oh, I feel like, and the devil's mad right now. But when you have a good day with your family and there's normally fighting, you ought to build an altar and say, this house is a house of unity. I thank you, Lord, for unity. He don't know we had unity today. We're going to walk in unity. Oh, shalom ahasata. Well, I love it. Don't happen. It will happen. But you've got to name an altar. You've got to build an altar and say, God, thank you for what you did. Let us walk in what you did. And God said, wherever there's an altar that's got a name on it that says, the Lord is my banner, you can expect me to fight whatever battle that is every time it shows up. Didn't say there wouldn't be a war. Didn't say it wouldn't come tempt you. Didn't say it wouldn't come fight you. Didn't say it wouldn't come attack you. But just said, if it does show up, I'll show up automatically because you built an altar when you had a victory. You, oh man. Ready for this? He said, Moses, you could have taken all the credit. You could have said, well, my hands are raised, and that's why we won the battle. But because you were humble and gave all the glory to me and built an altar in your victory, that has connected you to another victory in the future generations because you gave me the glory when I was helping you. Feel the Holy Ghost talking. I didn't even have time to write this stuff down. This is the Lord talking. There's another altar. Gideon's afraid. Hiding in his cave. Enemies everywhere. And the angel of the Lord shows up. And Gideon sees an angel. And the Lord said... Out of the angel. Peace be unto you. Watch this. It just sounds like a greeting. Peace be unto you. Fear not. You're not going to die. All he said at the beginning was, peace be unto you. And most of us would say, thank you, Lord. Peace be unto you too. But Gideon had just had a revelation. This is God. And if God just said, peace unto me, that's a promise. I can say thank you, or I can build an altar. It's just a cute little sentence, peace be unto you. But Gideon said, if God said, peace unto me, 
I can walk away and say, thank you, Lord, and I'll probably need peace tomorrow. But if I build an altar on a promise of peace, I just left being a coward right there. I will never fear again what the devil has been threatening me with because God said, I'm giving you peace, and I put an altar on my promise. <laughs> Someone needs to hear those words. You are not going to die. You're going to live. I curse that spirit of fear attacking you right now. It's time to build an altar on a word from God. I'm going to have some peace. I'm going to have some peace. I'm going to have some peace. My family's going to have some peace. My marriage is going to have some peace. My kids are going to have some peace. I release a spirit of peace in this room right now, in every family, in every home, in every situation, in the name of Jesus. You know what happened? The Bible said when Gideon built that altar, that unto this day it is yet there. Could have been a little temporary peace. It's going to be all right. Peace unto you. And he would need a breakthrough again the next day. But because he put an altar on his promise. Now watch this. We sing the song, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. We think that's a song. Those were altars. Ready? And the only reason why we have access to those words of that song, that he is my Jehovah Jireh, he is my Jehovah Nisi, he is my Jehovah Shalom, is because somebody way back when built an altar on a promise, and that promise has made its all its way down into 2018, and you can sing that song. Can I preach something right now? What altar could you build, Mom, that your kids and grandkids would call a song later? They'd sing about how great the Lord is, but you built an altar. It wasn't a song to Abraham. It wasn't a song to Moses. It wasn't a song to Gideon. But you called a song because you're walking in a permanent release of God that happened when somebody built an altar upon a promise. You can say tonight, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Not because you did something, but because Abraham named an altar. You can say, Lord, you're Jehovah Nisi. You're, oh, you're my banner. You're going to give me victory. Not because you did anything, but Moses said, i got to carry some rocks and name this thing. And you can look at your family tonight and say, we're going to have peace in our house. Not because you did anything, but Gideon heard a word from God one time and said, I'm going to build an altar on that word. How many mess? Oh, I'm going to mess with you. How many messages have come right to you, right to your family, right to your house that you went to the altar about but didn't build an altar about? That was a good message. And you leave, and then you need the exact. I got to listen to that again. Six months later, I need to go back and hear that message again. But if you build an altar on a word from God. You establish something in your future. <laughs> Remember those ten lepers? I'm almost done. Those ten lepers? They're all, they're all sick and missing limbs. And they came to Jesus and he said, go show yourself to the priest. You'll be healed. And as they're walking toward the priest, all of a sudden the leprosy dried up. They were still missing limbs, but they were no longer had leprosy. And they're thankful. They're going to go see their kids, their wives, their families. But one of them said... 
I got to go build an altar. And he came and worshiped Jesus. And Jesus said, Where are the nine? I expected them to build an altar at this miracle. Be whole. And all of a sudden, missing limbs grew out of the man's body because it became a permanent miracle because he built an altar with a moment with God. What's going to happen in your house this week, this month, and in 2018 if on a Tuesday night you start building altars? You got a promise from God, stand. If you don't, stand. Somebody needs to encounter Jehovah Jireh. Someone needs to name the altar. Jacob built an altar one time and said it's called El El Ohi Israel. God is the God of Israel. He's the mighty God of Israel. He, you know him as the mighty God now because Jacob built an altar and said you're the mighty God. What are you not naming? What are you not speaking about that God's been doing? What do you need to start thanking God for? Sacrificial worship. Because this is a landmark moment where everything turns around. I've got a promise here. But more than that, I've got an altar. And more than that, my altar's got a name. Some of you need to name your altar that lost loved one. Her salvation. This is my altar for her salvation. God promised me he's going to save her. God promised me he's going to save him. I'm going to build an altar. Thanking God. I'm going to name that altar. Her name. I'm going to name it his name and his salvation. The Lord is my savior. Jehovah saves. That's what Jesus is. You ought to name it something that gives God glory for saving. You got a lost loved one. You ought to start building an altar and thanking God every day for that person's salvation. Why? Because what you're feeling tonight will become reality. What you're hearing God doing tonight will become permanent in your house. But you've got to build an altar on your promise. Stop waiting on God getting bitter. Stop waiting on God to open doors and start building altars while you're waiting. Jacob said, I'm done. He built an altar one time and said, I'm going to call it El Bethel. This is the God of the house of God. He said, I'm going to build my altar at church. It still stands today. His altars become permanent landmarks. Words past and presence are changed. Futures are changed because somebody said, this is a moment I just can't forget and get over a couple days later. I've got to put something down in the ground. Joshua, go get those 12 stones and put them in that Jordan River. You just crossed the river. You could forget about it. Who cares? But he opened the Red Sea too. It's no big deal. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, Jericho's supposed to fall. It's wall. I have no idea how it's going to fall, but I'm going to build an altar altar in my victory right now he just opened up the Jordan I'm going to put 12 stones there thank you Lord for what you just did here now I know you're going to come through there because I've just built an altar in the victory you just gave me now in other words stop getting over what God does so fast well that was just a little it was just a headache that he healed he could let your headache be a brain tumor that killed you, but he healed it. You can build an altar on a headache being healed, and the next time something more severe comes, I've got an altar. He's my healer. He's my healer. He's my healer. He's going to heal me. I built an altar when he healed my headache. 
Somebody ought to run up here and build an altar unto God and start thanking him and worshiping him for specific things that he's done. Tell him, if it had not been for you in March three years ago, in April six months, six years ago, if you had to show up then, Build an altar on your promise. What are you waiting for God to do in your house? What are you waiting for God to do in your ministry? What are you waiting for God to do in your family? Lord, show me what you want for me. Show me what you want, Lord. Why does God send fire from heaven? Why does God send fire? I give you glory. No, no music, no music. Why does God send fire? Because somebody named Elijah is building an altar and drenching his altar with water. Someone needs to drop some tears on your altar right now. Someone needs to water your sacrifice. Someone needs to drop some tears on what you're giving God. Fire is about to fall on your altar. You're about to meet the God of fire. You're about to meet the God who answers prayer. You're about to meet the God who intervenes. Somebody drop a tear on your sacrifice. Somebody pick up a rock. Somebody say, this is going to work out. I'm going to build an altar. I'm going to live a life of sacrifice. I'm going to give my life daily to God. I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice. That's what it means. It means I'm on the altar. Somebody needs to bind the sacrifice with cords. Someone needs to say, you know what? This old flesh is going to tie it down. God is up to something. Is it a song or is it an altar? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. And I'll worship you because of who you are. It's just a song connected to some sacrifices. It's the song that's only produced through sacrifice. It's a song only produced through sacrifice. It's an anointing only produced through sacrifice. It's a promise only fulfilled through an altar. I sense strongly in the Holy Ghost that if you'll start building some altars on some promises, the promise will become fulfilled quite quickly. We're not thankful enough. We're not grateful enough. We get over miracles too fast. We get over people getting the Holy Ghost like it's no big deal. We get over people getting baptized like it's no big deal. God opens a blind eye. We don't really care the next day. But churches that build altars on nights where things happen walk in those demonstrations from that point forward. Families that build altars when God does something for them, walk in that level of power and authority from that point forward. Shiloh, Shiloh, Shalom, Shiloh, Prince of Peace, 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 Peace. Peace, 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 victory, provider. He's your provider. He's going to fight for you. You're going to have some peace. I said, he's your provider. He's going to fight for you, and you're going to have peace. Now build an altar on that.
build an altar on that. Don't just say, well, that was a good word. That word's for me. It'll leave you just as quickly as it came to you. The devil will come steal that word if you let him. This is how you cement the word in your spirit, in your marriage, in your finances, in your life, in your kid's life. You build an altar when a promise is released into the atmosphere. Let me never forget this night. Somebody start praying that right now. Let me never forget this moment. Let me never get over what I'm hearing right now. Let me never get over what I'm feeling right now. Let me never get over what you're doing right now. The peace I feel. Let me never get over that. The protection I feel. Let me never get over that. The provision I feel. Let me never get over that. God said I'll provide. God said I'll protect. And I'll bring you peace. Three promises that need altars. Provision, protection, peace. Three promises that need an altar. Provision, protection, peace. If you need one of those three, get your altar going. Get your prayer life stirred up. Don't just get over it tonight and not pray tomorrow. Stir your altar up tomorrow morning. You should have a place in your house that's your altar. You should have a place that hell fears to go near. A room that demons don't even want to walk into because that's your altar. A time that hell doesn't want to go near that room because that's your altar. A sanctuary inside your home. Maybe it's inside your car. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. Have an altar in your house. That hell fears to go near that room. Teenager, have an altar in your room. Have a place that you pray that hell wouldn't cross that if they could. Tomorrow morning, that's the place you're going to start building on what you're feeling right now. Don't just receive it. Build on it. Build your altar on what you're hearing. Build your altar on what you're receiving. Build your altar. You've been needing peace tomorrow morning when you wake up early to pray. Ask God to wake you up, set your alarm, whatever you've got to do. And when you get up to pray, start building on that peace. Oh, she cut the rabahasata. Here's my altar, God. I could sleep in, but here's my altar. That provision that that preacher preached about, here's my altar, God. Oh, that protection that I need you to fight for me about, here's my altar, God. Give us the spirit of Gideon. Give us the spirit of Moses. Give us the spirit of Abraham. I'll build altars when I hear his voice. What kind of altar could you build that would last from generation to generation? What kind of altar could you build that will release a promise to your kid? What kind of altar could you build that would affect your grandkid immediately? What kind of altar could you build that your son or daughter would say, Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. Had you not, had you not prayed like that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh. Oh. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Someone pray in the Holy Ghost. Build that altar. Build that altar. Your kid's waiting on it. Someone's waiting on a promise. It becomes permanent. A permanent promise from an anointed altar. A permanent promise. Let the miracle go forward. Let the miracle go down the generations. Build an altar on my promise. Build an altar on my word from God. I'm building an altar. I'm going to give this back to Brother Quinones, but I want to say this as you keep praying. The greatest way, I mentioned it a moment ago, to build your altar 
is to have a daily prayer life. Daily prayer life, specific place, specific time. That's your altar. And every day you go there and pray, it's like a rock you're putting on that altar. Yes. It's like a, it's like a sacrifice you're laying on that altar. Some days it'll be rocks. You're just carrying it up there. You don't feel nothing. It's, you're tired. You're not feeling the glory of God. And you're just, you're just, and you're just, it's work. And some days it's sacrifice and, and you're, you're laying stuff down and, and you're, you're committing and you're weeping and you're repenting for flesh and you're laying stuff on the altar and you're, you're repenting and you're, you're getting right with God and, and, but then there's times when fire falls because wherever there's altars with sacrifices, there will be fire. And you walk in, you've been praying six days in the morning, and it's been work, and you've been feeling all kind of flesh in you, and you're trying to get rid of it. Then all of a sudden, on that seventh morning, I'm in, I'm in Revelation right now. I'm trying to help you. That seventh morning or eighth morning, whatever, you walk in thinking it's going to be another day of work and prayer, just exhausting myself. All of a sudden, the glory of God will be in there as you step in that room, and you sit down, and you kneel down. All of a sudden, the presence of God will overwhelm you. You'll feel, I've never felt God so close. I've never felt angels in my house like I feel right now why because you've been building an altar on the word of god encounters come to homes with altars encounters come to homes with altars somebody start praying right now god show me what time to get up tomorrow morning Somebody start praying right now. God, show me where. Maybe some of you already know where it's at. You already know the spot. You already know the place. That closet might need to become a prayer room tomorrow morning. Some of you might have to go pick up some clothes tonight off a floor. Because what's always been a closet is about to be a prayer closet. Oh! What's always been a changing room is about to be a prayer room. (laughs) Where will your altar be? Build my altar. Lord, let me build my altar. I'm preaching to me. Let me build my altar higher. Stronger biggest piece of furniture in the tabernacle was the altar everything else could fit inside of it let my altar be the biggest moment of my day let my early morning prayer be the most important moment of my day everything else can fit inside that prayer meeting every conversation i have every encounter i have everything that happens the rest of the day can fit inside my altar if i want it to Every head bowed, every eye closed. Some of you are seeing places right now in your house, in your apartment. Some of you might have to build an altar in your car. You have to drive early in the mornings to work. That front seat is about to be an altar. (laughs) Hell is mad right now because you've just taken a step toward walking in something that you're just hearing. Let the altar that you're at right now go home with you tonight. I pray more than anything that you take an altar home with you tonight. 
I pray you don't get over this. Forget it by the time tomorrow rolls around. But it's time for some moms and dads to build some altars. You love your family? Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Walk in love like you never have before. Start building an altar tomorrow morning. This point forward, I'm going to love my family like I've never loved them by building an altar for them every morning in prayer. Can you build an altar that your kids can live on? An altar your kids can live on. Every other time something went on an altar, it died. But Abraham built an altar ultimately that his kid lived on. He lived on it. He didn't die on it. He lived on it. I want my boys to live on altars that I build. I want my daughter to live on an altar that we build. Every mom and dad needs to be praying right now. I don't care if your kid is grown. Start building an altar. Isaac was either 20, 30, possibly 37 years old when Abraham built that altar for him. It's never too late to build the altar. It's never too late to walk in a prayer life. How can my lost family come back to God if there's no altar every day with their names on it? It's just an unfulfilled, empty promise unless there's an altar. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name. I pray against any demonic forces that would steal the word of the Lord from your home or your spirit. I pray a hedge a hedge of angels around you and around your vehicle, around your home tonight, and around your mind and around your family and around your conversation and around your sleep tonight. And I pray that early in the morning the Lord Jesus would send an angel to wake you up. Tomorrow morning might be heavy. It might be a big old rock. It might be hard. Something you've been walking in a while. It might be a sacrifice tomorrow. It might be something you've got to kill in prayer. Bitterness, jealousy, pride, lust, fear, whatever. And some of you tomorrow morning might walk into the glory of God like you've never imagined. You might, it might be your first day doing this in the presence of God just bomb you to let you know that I'm right here. Build an altar on your promise. God bless you tonight.